uh, path. Uh, one of the first uh, students to actually graduate on that path, so it's uh, it's really nice. And I've uh, been learning a lot about uh, coaching tools. So more specifically, poets career, how to help people uh, develop their career and plan goals and uh, and learning a, a lot about coaching. It's been amazing. <laughs> I've really enjoyed seeing your progress. You've been so active on Workplace. It's been really great seeing you and the other career coaches talking. Um, would you say that that kind of community helped you get through the path? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been, it's been a great Great community um, and absolutely amazing to have this resource, as as you pointed already. The support, uh, the support there is is key, and it's already provided with the mentoring session that also gives structure every week, and also has providing deadlines. But but the the workplace, the community, uh, the ambassadors, all the, all the program that's that's available, is just an extra an extra gift that's really I, I invite everybody to to grab onto. Oh, amazing. Terrific. Well, the reason why I invited Clemence to speak with us today is because uh, she sent out some really thoughtful points about New Year's resolutions uh, the first week of January, and I was reading it, and I was really impressed with the way you had structured your presentation, and it was different from how I was thinking about New Year's resolutions, so that's why I was like, oh, you should, if you're available, please come talk to us. The first thing you started was you talked about gratitude for the last year. And I know a lot of people have been down on 2020. It, it was definitely a challenging year. So why is gratitude important for the past? Why is that important for successful goals in the future? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important, actually. It's, it's an amazing tool and it's an amazing change of, of perspective. For first, because we we've all had difficult times uh, last year. We all have difficult times in, in general, as as you were pointing out as well. Um, some ob obstacles and challenges are going to to come up. But uh, reflecting on the on the year that is past, in trying to find what was good about it, is something that we don't re usually do. So first of all, it might just show things that you might not be aware of. And when you look at, afterwards at the list of all the great things you can be grateful for that the year brought, that you could be like, wow, that's actually great. And also, I've also done great. Because it's so easy to be hard on ourselves and to focus on what we failed at or the deadlines we didn't meet or the things that went wrong. And... Uh, gratitude really invites this positive mindset that you were describing. It's one of the tools that can help it with that. And the positive also attracts positive. That's also something that's coming up a lot in research nowadays about coaching and in general in, in science. Um, so that's really a good way to start ahead for, for the new year. Focus on what was great to build up more greatness. <laughs> That's such a good point. You know, when you emailed this to me, I started thinking things through because I've been thinking about how awful 2020 was. But there were some really great things for me. Um, there, there were some wonderful interactions I've had with students this past year. Uh, I learned how to spend time with myself instead of always trying to go find friends and give people a call. Like, I learned how to sit with myself. And um, my partner learned how to bake, so I have been eating very well in 2020. <laughs> so there, there are certain things like that that I had not been thinking about. I had just been thinking what a rotten year it was. But there have been all these wonderful things that also happened. So I was really glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it's, it's um, been a lot of people's reaction to, to that exercise, actually. Like, oh, yeah, do you know what? When I look at the list, it's actually, I've got a, quite a lot of positive that I can look at. And it's also a very a powerful coaching tool altogether. What is great about, what is great about open classroom? Because sometimes we're also struggling on the training. What is great about the training? What is great about my learning, for example? Ooh, very good point. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Well, um, I then wanted to ask, uh, how do wishes help us inform our goals for the near future? In other words, how can we transform a wish into an attainable goal? Yes, um, I think that the, the wishes could be like a, a foundation to everything. Because um, if you ask yourself this question, like, what do I wish for? Like, if I, if I had a magic wand or if I had you know, three wishes, what would they be? 
And it's, and it's really interesting because usually when you ask people those questions and you try to narrow it down, so let's say I want uh, uh, to win, oh, I want a million dollars. Oh, what would that bring you? Or I want this, or I want, oh, what would that bring you? And ultimately, if you narrow it down to only one word, we're very similar. We want, we want love, we want happiness, we want joy, we want peace, we want well-being. This, this word are usually, uh, are usually what people use. So we, we want this. Ultimately, that's it. this is what we want, I believe. If it's not your case, that's fine too. Don't worry. <laughs> just, just sometimes we, we need to remember as well, and the wish is a, is a, good, is a good way to remember that. What is fundamentally why, why I'm living? Why, why do I expect you know, from, from this life? And then to this, an underlining sort of wish then, then can support more specific goals because then I know why I'm doing that. And it's not easy, as you, you were saying, the goal that you set for yourself is absolutely amazing, walking 5.5 miles per day. That's not easy. But when you know why you're doing it, you know, because you know it's going to bring so much to your life, then it's got an all different meaning, an all different purpose. And, and also one of the reasons, as you, as you pointed out, why the resolutions fail is that because sometimes we're too influenced by the should, but that's not really what I want, but I should, you know, that I really I should change that in my life. And, but bef well, before you understand that really, so you want to change something because this is going to bring you more happiness in life, then, you know, you, it makes much more sense to do it <laughs> as well. That's really interesting because you're right that the should is not very motivating. Like I should eat more vegetables. Like it's, it's only interesting if you're then like, oh, I just learned how to make these really delicious roasted vegetables. I'm going to make a goal of learning how to cook vegetables that are more tasty. Something like that, because it's not just the should, it's also something you look forward to. Absolutely. And it's, um, it's a connection to your desires. And that's also very something very key in psychology. Like people sometimes are a bit cut with those desires. Really, what what do you have down deep in your heart? And although we can probably all say that we want happiness, it's going to look very differently for you, for me, for somebody else. So it's it's really great also to follow what's there for you and to have this self love instead of this self violence. And that's also probably one thing that fails probably a lot with resolution because I'm going to do that I'm going to suffer 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 well you can suffer up to two weeks and then after a while you're like oh, no I give up to hand on me for example yes, it is about suffering that's really that's an excellent point about giving stuff up instead of finding something that makes you happy what made the walking so easy for me was that I found that I felt better after I was walking every day I would feel all like no like gross and then I would go do my walking and then I felt great afterwards so it was something that drew me to my daily walk instead of something suffering yeah giving giving meaning also to this is making me feel better of course it is effort it is work but I'm getting so much from it yeah yeah well and I think also I love the point that you make about why you want a million dollars very few people want a million dollars just to be able to hold the million dollars they want what it represents. They want to be able to have a, a good place to live and to have lots of food and to be secure in their life and things like that. So that's a good point. Um, it, uh, you were talking about the wheel of life. Can you tell us about this and why should we keep this in mind in 2021? Yes, yeah, so the wheel of life is a, is a very interesting coaching tool uh, you can look up online actually, and you can feel you can find some free uh, websites uh, that you can use uh, to to fill that up. So it's uh, basically the shape of a wheel, and you uh, give a grade for each area in your life. So give a grade up to ten, for example, in in family, in health, in love, in money, in career. And uh, and yeah, you can find some websites, and they will provide you with a with a nice looking little little wheel that gives you a picture. The idea is to get a picture of uh, how is my life now. We are at the beginning of 2021. How is it? What grade do I give to this, to that, and and why? And just to figure out what's what's there. 
And this is also um, what they call in um, emotional intelligence, actually. It's, it's really interesting, and we're looking into that really recently. This is uh, the first step of, uh, of being very emotionally intelligent, and this is part of the self-awareness aspect. So first looking into things. And then from there, you can also use a very powerful coaching tool, which is, what can I do then? <laughs> um, what can I improve in each area? Uh, so this is not only what do I want to improve, but what am I realistically able to, able to do? Uh, you probably know this very powerful quote that I really like. Um, uh, it's also called sometimes the serenity prayer. So grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And this is very crucial, especially in these times of pandemic that we are not able to, like if my wish is to travel around the world at the moment, uh, maybe, it's not really realistic, is it? But why do I want to travel around the world? Is my point to connect with cultures? Is my point to connect with people, learn about things? And then how can I, can I do that? Maybe, possibly, maybe there's a way um, to, let's say your goal is to connect more with your loved ones, well, you might not be able to socialize like in the UK right now when lockdown, might not be able to go and meet them, but you can still connect with them. You can still find ways and there'll be probably uh, a different modality, but it's still possible. So what can I do and how can I accept the things that I cannot change? I really, I really like that. It's one of my favorite quotes. It's something that I keep in mind. I really should just put it somewhere up so I see it more often. Um, but when I love to travel, I love being completely immersed in a different environment and how it makes me feel and how it inspire. It makes my brain kind of start noticing things and the way it works is different. But to your point, I went on a walk in a forest that I had never been to um, a, a couple hours outside of my city. And it had that same effect of my brain just picking up the sounds, the smells, the sights. Uh, so maybe I couldn't go to Costa Rica but I was able to still get that kind of, um, uh, that experience that I enjoy so much about being in a new place. That's a great example. Um, so when you work with people as a life coach, you ask them to build a timeline. Why is that important for building success? So yeah, it's, so there's those principles of timelines and milestones that you, you've also covered really, really well, have different purposes. So one of them is uh, the structure to give structure uh, and momentum, uh, because you've probably realized that that's definitely something that I've also um, observed about, about myself, is that my, my to-do list uh, for work purposes um, gets done, but my personal list usually <laughs> is the, the one that's left behind. And the things for me, because there is no structure in itself, there is no urgency, there is no deadline, if I don't set myself some, uh, then, well, you know, it gets uh, forgotten. <laughs> and, uh, and it's so easy not to have, not to have structure. So, so it's, it's a great way. And I find it as well. Um, so you start with the wishes that are really, really general. And then with the timeline, you can narrow it down to more specifics. So you have maybe your next year's plan. What do I want to get done by spring, by summer? by August, by December. Set intentions. Of course, you can always revive the deadline. Don't be like too stressed if you don't reach them, especially for personal goals um, or, or things that, that are not in control, as we were saying, like traveling. Maybe you can set the intention. That's, that's all right. And in the meantime, you can learn about the language of the country, let's say, and that's you know, something you can enjoy when you can get to travel. Um, and then, uh, so the next six months, be more specific and then the next quarter, and then the next month, and then next week, and then next this week, and then today. Narrow it down uh, more and more. But um, but without that, it's really it's really hard. And I really believe, like you did, the example of, of your of your goal of the of this resolution is is very interesting because I think this is probably when you get the most result when you set everyday goals. When your goals is based on a now and not on a later, uh, because if it's like once a week, it's so easy to, to get to get lost and lost and lose track. 
Uh, for me, one of my goals every day is to do meditation at least an hour per day. And I usually manage to get two hours done. But it is something I will not compromise on. And as you said, I decide every day, every day I repeat that commitment. I'm going to do it no matter what, at least an hour, if more if I can. So really That's crucial. Amazing. Um, with Michael, I realized very quickly that the most I could go would be two days without missing the goal, without getting the goal, because if I skipped five days, I would be so far behind. Every day is such a, a large, insurmountable amount. Um, but if I if I skipped five days, then the whole year's goal would be gone. So the most I could skip would be one day, maybe two days. And it was really difficult because I traveled to France in February. And once I was in France, I had all those long plane rides, and I didn't have access to my treadmill. I had to walk around Paris, but which is lovely and so much fun. But um, I can walk about four to five miles an hour. In Paris, you have to walk like two miles an hour with everyone else. You know, you can't go speeding past people or get in traffic. Uh, so it was a major challenge in February. It was the only month that I did not meet my target goal. Yeah. But probably um, because of things that were not in your control, I, I would say, in, in this uh, in this case. Yeah. It's also, can, it really makes me think again of, about this idea of failure that you, you also connected really, really deeply. And what I loved about, um, you probably did that, um, all of us probably did this um, Learn How to Learn course at the very beginning of our path. And I love, absolutely love the concept of excellent mistakes. So mistakes are part of the learning journey. You are You need to be willing to be accepting to be uh, welcoming mistakes in your life if you want to learn, if you want to achieve, if you want success. You, you gave the example of Abraham Lincoln. It's the same for Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. How many times did he fail that guy? His life is amazing. Wow. If you haven't seen about him, it, it's really inspiring. Yeah. So one last question. Um, do you have any general advice to students who have big goals for 2021? Well, I would say first that, uh, that it's wonderful that you're uh, setting up ambitious goals. I would say well done, and it's wonderful, and um, um, it's, it's amazing. What you can play with is the visualization exercises. I found them really, really powerful. So visualizing yourself uh, when you've already achieved the goal. There are um, exercises about um, interviewing yourself, so success interview, imagining interviewing yourself. Afterwards, you can stay with somebody to interview you um, as, as a graduate, for example. Uh, that, that's really great. And what comes out of that kind of thing is, is, is very powerful. You have, um, similar to the gratitude uh, idea and exercises, the um, uh, thank you in advance that you can play with, uh, maybe on a regular basis. So that's also helping with the visualizing, making it more and more real. And helping your your vision and your direction, um, helping also maybe with the doubts and the, and the bumps and the <laughs> that you know that happened along along the way. Um, one of the keys I would really I would really encourage you to work on is to uh, quit the self violence yes. and invite more love, self love, gentleness. That's really yeah. emotional yeah. level. We're so mean to ourselves. We yeah. focus on any mistake we make. We agonize over it. We get that hot burning sensation like, oh, I was so stupid today. Why did I do that? Um, I'm guilty of it too. I'll agonize over the smallest thing that most other people don't even realize happened. And I'll just beat myself up over it. And it's not productive. Yeah. It, it is said that we are harder on ourselves than on others. So it's really interesting. And that and but what's great about that is we're not the only one doing this, you know. We all do it in our own little mind. So it gets to my next point, as you were pointing out, get support. Don't stay alone and stuck. Just reach out. Um, don't stay alone struggling. Reach out to your mentors. Reach out to your ambassadors, to your fellow students, 
to workplace, set up uh, accountability buddies. I absolutely love that. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the idea is to match, uh, to match up with someone and to meet regularly and to set goals and to um, say like, if you meet every two weeks, so what are we going to, are you going to get done for the next two weeks and how do you keep on track? Uh, are you going to send me a message every day once you've done this and that, no matter what your what your goal is? And, and that really, the, the force of getting together enables to, to get more done quickly, to achieve more in a more powerful way. And it's really, I want to go back to the thing you started with, anything is possible, that's why something I was planning on finishing with. It's amazing. The, the circle is, is complete. It's really, it, it really makes it even more possible because you know that you, when, when, whenever you're stuck or whenever you make a mistake and you feel, just, just reach out and you'll get unstuck. It's as easy as that, really. Well, I love that you have ended with that plug. Um, we are at the hour, so uh, we're, we're going to close. If you want to talk more about New Year's resolutions or any goal setting, uh, I am on Workplace every single day. I would love to talk to you. I know other people would like to talk to you. So please do log into Workplace, start a conversation. Feel free to tag me in your conversation. Um, I think these are important things to talk about, and we want to help you be successful. So here's to a 2021. Thank you, Clemence, for joining us today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me on. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye.